Hello, this video is going to describe assignment one of Computer Science 340. The goal of this assignment is to get you comfortable working with Java again after you know uh, the break, um, and also making sure that you know how to write classes that contain data inside of them, use program parameters and arrays inside of a program. What the assignment is going to ask you to do is to come up with a program that converts pictures from full color into plain grayscale images. The rest of this video is going to describe the contents of this web page, which have all of the requirements and the information that you need to get started. So let's take a look at that. Right, so the objective for this assignment is to get you comfortable with coding in Java again, using classes, multidimensional arrays, and program parameters, which are probably new for a lot of you. The goal of this program is to convert images from full color into grayscale. Now to do that, you're going to have to load an image out of a file on your computer. And to do that, you need to know what format the image is saved in. Now there's lots of different image file formats. You've probably heard of some of them like JPEG and GIF and PNG, and there's some more obscure ones like TIFF and bitmap and things like that. And all of those formats, in order to not take up a lot of space, have the image compressed and store it in a binary format. Doing that makes the file smaller, but it makes it really hard for a programmer to work with because you can't just open up the file and see what it looks like. You have to decompress and decode all of the image. So instead, we're going to work with a much simpler but somewhat more obscure image file format called PPM. Now a PPM image has a strict format and that file format says that the first line contains just the word P3. That just marks that it's a PPM file. After that, you have two integers that give the size of the image, the width and the height in pixels. For this project, you can assume it'll always be 500 by 500. After that, you have one line containing an integer which is the maximum color value in the image. All of our image files are gonna be 255, which is somewhat standard. Um, that's uh, called true color images. You can have smaller ones, but 255 is pretty standard. And then after that, you have all of the actual color data that goes into the image. So let's look at an example to see what this is gonna look like. So right here, I have the image file farmer.ppm, which is one of the examples. Let me show you what it looks like first. Um, it looks like this, a picture of what is now called James Farmer Hall, used to be called Trinkle Hall. And here is what is actually stored inside of this file. So again, we have this first line, P3, just by itself. Then we have 500 by 500, that's the size. Then we have 255, which is the color depth, uh, technically, the maximum value for any one of these colors. Then we have a bunch of numbers after that, a bunch and bunch and bunch of numbers. And we have actually three numbers for every pixel. So we have 500 times 500 pixels, and each pixel is composed of three numbers. These three numbers can go from zero to 255, which again is our max color value. So this one uh, set of three numbers right here represents the upper leftmost pixel in this image. The numbers, basically, the first one stands for the red, the second one stands for the green, and the second one stands for the blue. And they give you the intensity of the red, green, and blue color components. So in order to make this make sense, we can open up a paint program and kind of play with the colors. So I've pulled up a paint program here so you can see what these numbers kind of mean. So I think if I click edit colors, I can play with these values. So our first pixel had a red of 101, a green of 130, and a blue of 188. That makes it this exact shade of blue, which it looks like that could be uh, in the upper left corner right here. So the higher your red value, the more red is in the image. The higher the green value, the more green is in the image, and same with blue. So together, these three numbers make one color. That's the upper left-hand corner. Then we have the color that is just to the right of that first pixel. The second pixel is a 
ex in fact, exactly the same color. Then we have the third pixel right here, which is slightly different. It has slightly more blue. And so each set of three numbers gives you one color value for one pixel, right? So that's how this image format works. You have three times W times H numbers, and each one, uh, rather, each set of three numbers gives you one pixel value. Hopefully that makes sense. So then what we're going to do is we're going to load all of this information into our program so that we're storing the image inside of a Java object. Then what we're going to do is we're going to convert it to grayscale. So in order to convert a number, rather a color to grayscale, what you do is you average the three colors together. So we can do this for our first example color, the upper left-hand corner of the one image of Farmer Hall. If we average 101, 130, and 188 together, let's see what that's going to be. 130 plus 101 plus 188 is 419. Then if we divide by three, we get, oops, I uh, can't see the start of this, 139.6. For this, it doesn't really matter if you round up or down. Uh, I'm going to say that we're going to round down because that is sort of what Java does by default. And so we'll say 139. Now let's load that into the paint program and see what it looks like. All right, so we're going to take that average, the 139, and we're going to use it for all three components, the red, the green, and the blue. And what we get as a result is a gray color that is roughly the same brightness as the original blue color that we had. If you notice, if I drag this along this gradient, all colors from black to white in this system have the same values for red, green, and blue. Just the higher the value is, the more bright the color is. So if you set red, green, and blue to the same thing, it's going to be somewhere on this grayscale spectrum. So that's what we're going to do for the grayscale conversion. After you read in each set of three numbers, you're going to average them together and then store that for the red, the green, and the blue, and that will make the image go to grayscale. So we have a couple of example images, three. You have your input image, which is in the PPM format like we talked about. In order to make it easy for you to view these and see what the results are supposed to be like, I also have versions as PNGs, which are um, easier to open. So if we click on eagle.png, we'll see that it looks like this, UMW logo. After you convert it to grayscale, you would get an image like this. And the ping version of it, like I said, is easier to see. Looks like that, a gray eagle. We'll look at the other ones real quick. Uh, Farmer Hall, we already saw. Here it is in grayscale. So you can see this algorithm of averaging the three colors gives quite good results. This looks like a grayscale version of the picture that we saw before. And then the other one is another picture from campus of a snowy day, which looks like this when you put it in grayscale. So you have these three images that you can download and test your program with to see that they're getting the right results. Right, so that's what your program is supposed to do. Now we'll talk about sort of the way that you should go about doing this. So you should start by taking the input file name as a program parameter. So don't say, you know, please enter the name of the file. You should just read it as the program parameter. And again, we talked about uh, in module one how to do that. Then you'll load a PPM image file into a 2D array. If the file is not found, print an error message and exit. Now, the way that I think is the easiest to go about this is to make a class to represent a single pixel. So make class pixel, which contains red, green, and blue integers. So each pixel object will have the three numbers inside of it. Then what I would do is I would make a 2D array of these pixel objects, which would be 500 by 500. That'll be the easiest way to go about this, I think. So then you'll load the pixel data into a 2D array of pixel objects, then write code to apply the, apply the grayscale conversion, which again is basically just averaging the three numbers together. And then finally, you'll write the data back out into a file named grayscale.ppm. 
You'll have to make sure that you follow the grayscale or rather the PPM image format in order to do that. So when you're writing your files back out, you also have to put a line that just says P3. Then you'll also have to put a line that says 500 by 500 and a line that says 255. And then you can go ahead and start putting the actual pixel data out into there. One thing I should mention real quick is that the white space in this file matters for these first three lines. It has to be one line, then one line with a space, and then one line, and then the pixel data starts on the next line. But after that, the white space doesn't matter. You can put either a space or a blank line between the numbers, and it doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with it. So if you look at it, we have three, six, nine, 12, 15, not quite. So we have five pixels and then this pixel is broken in half. The line breaks here don't correspond to anything. Uh, they just are in there to make the file look a little bit neater. So you can put the line breaks wherever you want to when you're doing this. So when you're done with this, when you've run your program, hopefully you will have a grayscale PPM image as the output of your program. But in order to test to make sure that it actually worked in some way, you will need to look at the .ppm image on the other side. Now on Linux and Mac computers, you should be able to just open up a ppm image and just have it work. On Windows by default, that is not the case. So what you can do is you can download this image viewer called EarthFanView. I'm not sure what the name signifies, but it looks like this. And so you can open these ppm images up in the EarthFanView image viewer. So that way you can test your program to make sure that it's working. If you have any trouble with that, please let me know and I'll help you with it. This program also has extra credit opportunity. So besides just making the grayscale converter, you can do some other kind of image manipulation trick if you want to for extra credit. So examples might include flipping the image you know, vertically or rotating the image or making it way lighter or way darker or doing an Instagram like filter, like if you want to make like sepia tone images, so it looks like it's an, on an old timey television set, you could do something like that. So if you complete an extra credit effect, you should write the modified image into another file called extra.ppm so that when I run your program, it generates two things. It generates grayscale.ppm and also extra.ppm. And then when you email me the code for this, you should say what the thing that you did is. All of your assignments are going to have some general requirements, basically to make sure that you're writing pretty decent quality code. One of them is that you shouldn't have any global variables other than constants. So you shouldn't make the file name a global variable or anything like that. All member data of a class should be private. Your source code should be readable and reasonably indented. This is actually the one I care about the most <laughs> rather than, than comments. Comments are good. You should have some comments in your code. So if you have a big block of code, you should say this block of code reads in the image file or something like that to sort of summarize what's happening. But please, please indent your code reasonably. It's very hard to read if you do not do that. So when you're done with this assignment, please uh, submit it by emailing it to me. Like usual, just send me the .java file. Uh, don't send any .class files or anything else. So I hope this is an interesting assignment. It should be a good one to get you back into the swing of coding. If you have any questions on it, like usual, please just let me know. Thanks.